Hello everyone, I'm Matt. I am a wedding photographer and portrait photographer based in Bristol, England. Um, I'm also a bit of a YouTuber, so some of you may have seen me on YouTube. I'm not that famous, I'm not too pretentious about it, but uh, you may have seen me promoting my sort of photography and generally lens reviews when it comes to wedding photography and portraits on there. Uh, I'll put a link somewhere so you can see more about it if it's of interest to you. Um, but I'm coming to you today to talk to you about portrait photography, but also a certain brand of lenses that I've become really fond of over the last couple of years. That is Samyang. Now I'm sure most of you know who Samyang are and what lenses they offer. Um, when it comes to lenses, I have a whole wide range of lenses that suit all different purposes, to be honest. I have the Tamron Trilogy, the Zoom Trilogy, all the way from 17 up to 180. Um, at 2.8 and they are fantastic and they have a purpose. These lenses are great on the go lenses and I use them a lot. When it comes to portraits and I've got a little bit more time, maybe during a wedding or on an actual shoot with someone, uh, I tend to stick to primes. Now, Sony do some wonderful G Master lenses. They're great. Everyone knows they're great, but they're not cheap. And I want to talk to you about portrait photography and in particular how good these Samyang lenses are and what I consider a budget price. They're still not the cheapest out there, but for the price you're getting, an amazing lens. Now, I'm not a Samyang ambassador. I'm not paid to talk about any of this. I'm not paid to talk about any brand, to be honest, but I do want to talk about Samyang because I've become a bit of a cheerleader for them. I'm a Sony fanboy in general, but these Samyang lenses are fantastic. Um, I'm going to start off with my favorite focal length, which is great for all purposes, and that is the 85mm. In particular, this Samyang 85 1.4. Now when it comes to portrait photography, I just want to show you that you don't have to go all out, follow certain YouTubers or personalities out there that say you must have the best lens that you can afford. Not everyone says that, but even subtly, there's a lot of people out there, bloggers especially, that tell you you want to get this G Master lens. I love this 135, but I could live without it. I don't think I could live without this 85mm 1.4. Now I've come from the Sony 85mm 1.8 and I've done a few reviews on that and it is a fantastic, fantastic lens. But there's something about that little extra stop of light and the image that I can get from this that just makes me fall in love with it. I'm just gonna show you some images that I've caught over the last two years, not so much in the last 12 months with obvious reasons, weddings have been on hold. So this is mainly my thoughts from last year, but again, I'm itching to get back out and use this properly. So just taking a look at some of these images, I think now we're very lucky in the world we're in with Sony cameras and Nikon and Canon as well, especially coming along with their mirrorless range over the last couple of years. We can do a lot more with our cameras and they free up the creativity side of things and I absolutely adore them for that. But this Samyang in particular, I've been very impressed with the build quality of it and how it works and it just enables me to get out there and shoot the images with confidence. I'm no longer worried about what my gear is gonna do. I'm purely focused on the image. What I can do with a mirrorless lens, as you can see, I can shoot straight into bright sunlight and find that I can turn the shutter speed all the way up and get images that actually make it look like nighttime. There's a few here that are actually done in the day and you're able to affect the image and use off-camera flash to make it look much later than it is. And that's what it's all about. It's all about capturing light in the way that you want. Now, working with people and portrait photography isn't always easy, but I will say I've not come from a different background. So I've always worked with people. My, my background is with weddings and always working in that fast paced environment and having the ability to be able to ask people to pose, but without being too in your face. If you're too firm and fierce and hiding behind your camera, Again, it makes it rather difficult. People won't listen to you. Always try and bring yourself out away from the camera and just, just sort of have a conversation with them, have fun with them and try and get the reaction. And again, with mirrorless and the fact that these things catch eye autofocus, which these Samyangs do very well on the Sonys, you can have the camera a little bit lower down and you can get those natural reactions. And that's something that I am a big advocate of when you can just sort of take a step back capture the moment, have fun with the couple. Now, whilst this Samyang 85 is probably my favorite Samyang, um, I do want to touch on two others that I am very fond of, that I've had a chance to use properly, 
That is a special mention for the 75mm first. That's the 75mm 1.8, the small and mighty lens that they produce. And that is great on the crop sensor cameras as well as with the full frame cameras. And it's, it's great to have this little small and mighty range that you can just take with you traveling out and about. Now I'm shooting this uh, on the Sony 35mm and I just purchased this lens probably two weeks, not even that, before the Samyang 35mm was announced. And only a week or so after that, I managed to get my hands on a review copy and I'll show you some of the images and footage I managed to get with that. Now again, sticking with portraits, obviously a 35mm focal length gives you that extra width and you can get a little bit more in the image. It's still not a full wide shot uh, or something that you'd get especially with landscape. Not to say that you can't, one of my favorite images uh, is with an 85mm uh, lens, which I'll show you right now. This is an 85mm landscape portrait, if you will. So you've always got to be creative as best as you can, but the 35mm is generally for more groups to get a little bit more of the environment around them in. You're not just looking to isolate a particular person or a couple. And the 35mm 1.8, the small and mighty, is very much like the Sony 35 1.8. An absolutely fantastic lens. And I mean it when I say if I didn't already own the Sony 35mm 1.8, I would have bought that Samyang 35 1.8. It's a great all-rounder, small and light. You could use it for travel. You could use it for professional work or just for daily shots. It's amazing. And again, I'm just going to show you some images that I managed to take with that here. I didn't quite get to use it properly on weddings because I didn't really have any weddings over the last 12 months. But I did take it for a little shoot with my children. Now, you should say you shouldn't work with children. I agree, <laughs> children and animals can be difficult. But I will say, even though these are my children and people say that's a little bit of a cop out, they'll listen to you, they actually don't listen to me because they're my children. <laughs> now, these are some nice images and some people will say, oh, you've posed them well and look at the, the, the model look on their face and things like that. No, that's just disdain for the fact that dad has dragged them towards the coastline so I can get some images with this lens. So the attitude is real. But again, you can still get some great results. And these images were actually taken on a very windy, very stormy environment. The salt water was bashing in off the coast uh, and the lens held up really well. And yeah, the attitude you see is real. I did, however, get to do a very small mini wedding um, and I used it on the A7S III for some video work. And again, you're able to get portrait videography and document a wedding. And I shot pretty much the whole wedding with this. And as this little clip I'm gonna show you now just showcases how good these lenses are and how far they've come. And I think in the whole world of portrait and videography with these mirrorless, I know I keep going on about it, but they really are a fantastic addition to my gear. I've never had it so easy to create the content and the videography and photography that I want to create. But uh, yeah, just check out this little clip. It's only a couple of minutes. Ignore the couple of drone shots, but this was a little mini clip I put together for the couple and they only really wanted me to capture the ceremony. Um, but we had a little walk about and I did some romantic shots and you can see it nails focus. Color rendition is amazing. Absolutely lovely. Check it out. Oh, yeah.
So yes, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a fan of the Samyang lenses. They haven't really released a bad lens, I don't think, in the last three years, maybe, maybe more than that. And all of the new products they're releasing are of a top-notch quality. The build quality is great, and the image quality is fantastic. And that's, that's what you want. I think you'll find there's going to be always a little bit of compromise, maybe a small bit of chromatic aberration on some images, but it's quite minimal, especially on the 1.8s. Um, and this 1.4 is absolutely fantastic. I love the dreamy look of the bokeh and it is wonderful. Now, this isn't meant to be an advertorial for these lenses and I do want to say when it comes to portraits and things like that, it just gives you the opportunity to get out there and forget about the gear you've got, which is hard because we all have photography gear and videography gear, I know. And it's hard to take a step back from that. But when you're focusing on the quality of your images and the photography, side of things especially for portrait photography you can just take a step back and know that your equipment is getting everything it needs to and really focus on the image that you're trying to capture being as creative as you can now i love weddings and they in a way kind of force me to be creative in a very short time frame so you the, the wedding day itself is quite long and there's lots of things going on and you tick them off as you go and I'm going to capture these moments now with the bridal preparations and then get a little bit with the boys then guest arrivals in the ceremony and the speeches and even the first dance they all speak for themselves when it comes to the first dance and into the evening I like to shoot off camera flash and again it just makes my images that little bit different I think a lot of people now do that but I've always loved being able to put the camera one side and the flash the other side and shoot into the flash maybe with a couple obscuring it and you get this lovely halo effect and if you do it right and you're in the right area especially when it comes to first dance if your back is to a light wall you'll find that the flash will bounce off those walls and put a nice little bit of light back on them as well and it gives you that really dreamy look and something that I'm a, a big fan of now I wasn't going to go into off-camera flash but I will mention it again these lenses and all of the mirrorless range now from Sony work really well with off-camera flash and even the range like Godox have been fantastic for that. It's just changed the way I shoot. I think we're very lucky right now. There is a lot of photography gear, lenses, third-party lenses. If you look at Samyang, Tamron, Sigma, and obviously Sony native lenses or Canon and Nikon native lenses, they are amazing. There's such a wide range that you could go out and just get two or three lenses and cover pretty much most things that you would need to cover. And it's something that I am very happy about. I love new gear and I just love the fact that these companies are bringing out more and more great lenses. In fact, there's only a couple more lenses that I want to get in my arsenal and I think I've got everything I need. There's a few others that I haven't got on the table, but these are the ones that I tend to use uh, when it comes to wedding photography and portrait photography especially. I hope this has helped. Just a little bit of insight into my thoughts on portrait photography. It wasn't really meant to be. A whole load of spiel about how good Samyang are there's a lot of good lenses out there but I will say if you're looking for a good portrait photography lens and you're looking to get it into portrait photography or expand on your portrait photography and you don't have an 85mm then the Samyang is a fantastic choice this 85mm 1.4 is amazing the images are lovely and I'm sure you'll agree if you want to find out a little bit more about me and what I do, feel free to check out YouTube and my channel Roto. Um, and you'll see me and there's lots of reviews on all these lenses and my thoughts on wedding and portrait photography in general. And I'm sure if you go onto Castle Cameras, you will see all these lenses, especially the Samyang range, and you'll see how affordable these lenses are. So definitely worth a look. Thanks again for listening to me waffling on. I hope you've enjoyed what I've showed you and what you can produce with some of these and a little bit of a, an insight into the world of wedding portrait photography. And I will sign off. As always, I'm Matt from Roto. Be kind, be safe, and be the best you can be.